And the screen team is back on this full hour edition of the show. And we're getting ready to review uh, the prequel trilogy. All right. Uh, Star Wars, obviously, we love them. And uh, George Lucas decided to make the prequels. He decided to tell Anakin Skywalker's story, Darth Vader's story. And uh, he decided to make the the prequels in the late uh, 1990s and early 2000s. And we're here to review them and go over them. And I've got my fellow Star Wars uh, buddy here, Jake. And we have we decided to <laughs> invite Kadem, too, because we wanted a perspective of someone who has never seen the Star Wars films. Well, you've seen the you've seen the original ones, right? Yeah, I've seen the original ones. But you have not yet seen the prequel until now, correct? Until now, yeah. Okay, so we wanted a, a fresh perspective on it. Uh, so first off, Jake, we're starting <laughs> off with the Phantom Menace. What were your original thoughts? Well, I was 11 years old when I first saw it. I saw it in theaters when it came out, mm-hmm. and I was excited. A little bit of backstory. Uh, I'd started watching the Star Wars films probably age six or seven. Okay. Uh, watched the original trilogies in their original, I guess, VHS status as they were, yeah. you know, from the 70s and early 80s. And then the uh, special edition came out. Uh, and, of course, being a 10-year-old kid, and I got the special edition on VHS for my birthday, 10th birthday. I, uh, I really enjoyed all the, the cuts, and I enjoyed the little vignettes telling you about all the edits that they'd made and the mm-hmm. new special effects that they'd put in the old films. And I always remembered at the end of uh, the Return of the Jedi little vignette about the special features like, yep, we had to try this stuff out, get ready for the prequels. I'm like, prequels? <laughs> <laughs> so in 1999, I was super excited. I loved the film. I went back and saw it uh, the next weekend, and I think I saw it again uh, about a month later when it was still in theaters. Mm-hmm. And at age 11, I think it was a, a great a great way to bring any kids, especially whether they were familiar with the original trilogy or not, I, th- I think it was, it was a great film for kids. Now... A lot of people have their problems with some of the characters, some of <laughs> some of the actors who some of the actors who portray these characters. Yes. And uh, uh, well, I, I always try to point out the good of the prequels because I still enjoy watching them. All right. Well, okay. So you enjoy watching them, but do you do you like them? <laughs> do I like them? I think they could have been better. Okay. I do, but at the same time, uh, I try to look at them as not being a fan service project as much as they were a george lucas this is what i want to tell my story this is what this is what i want to do and forget you kind of (laughs) yeah this was when he was going through his phase of no they are my movies not your movies right right um everybody's biggest complaints and i will get the fresh perspective on this (laughs) i I don't know if it's everybody's biggest complaint about the fountain phantom menace but uh most people say jar jar binks uh -uh, why'd you do that to us george what's your perspective katem uh, at first, you know, I was kind of iffy. He's got a really annoying voice. We all know that. But I'm annoying as myself. You know, just throwing that out there. <laughs> so but you could relate to Jar Jar? I, I could relate to him, you know. Maybe not that annoying. Okay, maybe so. But uh, the Jar Jar thing, I, I could blow that over and be fine with it. But, you know, other people's perspectives, you know, like Jake said, why? Why would you do that? <laughs> you know, why not? You know, just throw it in there. So Jar Jar didn't uh, didn't upset you that much. What about the rest of the movie? Did you get, did you have a good time watching it? Yeah, I felt like a little kid just watching it. Of mm-hmm. course, for the first time, like I was just glued to the TV screen. Emily was throwing popcorn at me, trying to you know pay attention to me. I was like, it's Star Wars, shh, yeah, just be quiet. Jar Jar's on. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was uh, I I was nineteen when this came out, and obviously, like everybody else in in the world i was a huge star wars fan and was excited to see it i still remember the theater that uh that i saw it uh saw it at and uh i remember thinking i don't remember hating jar jar right away but i remember thinking after watching the film that i wasn't completely satisfied yeah i didn't hate it but i was i was like i wanted i wanted more of it and after seeing it a hundred times since then you know there's there's a lot of things that uh you know really turn my turn my gears you know <laughs> obviously the jar jar thing but i understand why he was created he was created for uh you know little kids you know or the younger generation getting into the uh uh in the into the new trilogy but you know uh what's jake lloyd yes playing anakin he was kind of annoying a little bit in the <laughs> in the film i didn't really care for him too much um you know there's a lot of cgi in it it didn't feel it didn't feel like a real world to me. It didn't have the weight. I think The Phantom Menace of all the prequels had the most weightiness to it as far as the visuals. Yeah. 
uh, I think that they did use a lot more practical stuff on this than they did in the other two prequels. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the effects go, uh, my feelings on Jar Jar Binks, of course, at the time, I didn't, I didn't really care. It's like, hey, it's that guy that talks funny, you right, know, right, that, right. The Jedi, that follows the Jedi it's around. Squeeze me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's always getting in trouble, and really, he's kind of leading the story along, yeah. essentially. Uh, but yeah, as I got older, by the time Episode Two came around, I'm just like, you know what? I kind of hope that the Jar Jar doesn't play the same character. <laughs> and he didn't. <laughs> and he was essentially written out. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, which is actually, uh, I, which is actually yeah. kind of funny because you know you said George Lucas is like, hey, these are my movies, I'm gonna yeah. do what I want. But there was such a, a fan backlash to him that he, you know, Jar Jar got kind of exactly. downscaled. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the the biggest thing is, I think what saves this movie is the interaction between Ewan McGregor and uh, Liam Neeson mm-hmm. as being the you know master and Padawan combination. That's really the story that kind of pulls the movie along and that's the relationship that sells the whole movie for me yeah. and makes it a good movie pod racing was cool i don't care if they say everybody says well that was just in there to sell toys and sell video games i'm just like that was an awesome video game <laughs> why would you complain about that i love the pod racer video game but anyway <laughs> there are a lot of good things with this film uh i would say i agree with you on the relationship with uh you know you and mcgregor and uh and Liam Neeson, I thought uh, I thought they were both great casting choices, and Ewan McGregor was you know not even not even known then. So you yeah, know, I think he really uh, embodied Obi Wan Kenobi, and you see that later on in the other prequel movies. Uh, another thing I liked was you know when we watch the original Star Wars films and they're doing the lightsaber battles and stuff like that, it's all very you know very yeah, kind of slow. There's, there's, slow. You know, <laughs> once and, again, there's there's a weight to it. There's, uh, it's very it's very heavy when you get a little bit more of a samurai action going on in, yeah. in Phantom Menace. Yeah, this one, I mean, you know, it's beautifully choreographed, and you know that that you know where you see Qui Gon, you know, die, and then you know Obi Wan's he's ticked off, and he goes <laughs> after Darth Maul. That's that's the best lightsaber battle of all time, right there. It is. That is so so cool. I mean, I love watching it and rewinding it and watching it again. It's it was just so so well done. You know, Darth Maul was a great great villain, a great character. I wanted more of him, but they kicked yeah. him off right away. You know, <laughs> what did what did you think about that? Did you like a lot of the characters in this, Kato? I like Liam Neeson just because Taken. I just can't get over the <laughs> fact that he's still looking for his daughter. He just grew long hair. But uh, the Darth Maul thing, the thing behind that is that was actually my first Star Wars toy, even though I've never seen any of them. Mm-hmm. Just because he had the double lightsaber, and it's always fun hitting my brother with him. <laughs> but you know, Darth Maul was always my favorite. You know, the makeup and everything was just yeah. spot on for me, especially Liam Neeson. I still can't get over that. And there is a theory to that. If they would have carried Maul over as the permanent apprentice of the sith throughout the rest of the prequels they would have been a bit better story to tell even if they would have you know just kind of pulled uh well maybe he just lost a limb and had to retreat yeah that, that would have told better but i think it was more of the eye for the eye is kind of how george said uh i think this is how kids would appreciate it is if qui-gon dies well i gotta kill the guy that killed qui-gon right right have you guys seen the clone wars the cartoon show uh no okay because i think <laughs> they brought him back i think they brought darth maul back on that show i think maybe i don't know how they oh. did it but i think they did so i'm sure one of those star wars guys will can let us know i'm gonna have that. to it's, that's on netflix i'm gonna have to start watching through it <laughs> all right uh, that was the phantom menace um out of all the prequels I don't hate it the most. The next one I do hate the most. It's called Attack of the Clones, and I'll talk about that next right here on KWOC.